ancient China reigned supreme as the world's technological superpower. Only now are we discovering that many of the inventions that shape our modern world have their roots in this remarkable oriental civilization. Complex geared machines that allowed production on an industrial scale. Precision seismographs for detecting earthquakes. Drilling machines that bored for natural gas hundreds of meters beneath the earth. The cosmic engine, a superscale astronomical computer that not only told the time, but also predicted the passage of the planets and the stars. And even blast furnaces, capable of forging metal on a scale that rivals that of the modern world. Some of these technologies were so complex that for centuries they remained a mystery. China was always an immense state, much more unified than Europe at the same time. If they were to control the population, they had to organize manufacturing on a very large scale. I regard that as the basis of industrialization. But how did the technology of China become so advanced? And who were the ancient inventors that designed and built these complex and awe-inspiring machines? This ancient text provides a clue. It describes in detail something that is still needed in modern times, but was actually invented nearly two millennia ago. It is a seismograph, an earthquake-detecting machine. It was designed and built by the master inventor Chang Heng. Chang Heng, who lived during the time of the Romans, rivals Archimedes and Leonardo da Vinci, as one of the greatest geniuses of the past. In the second century AD, he designed the Hu Feng Daidong Yi, the instrument for inquiring into the wind and the shaking of the earth. The seismograph isn't quite as modern an invention as people perceive. It was invented 2,000 years ago in China. Chan Heng's invention was probably something like 1,600 years ahead of what was done in the West. Today, the earthquake administration in Beijing uses digital technology to record ground-shaking tremors over large bands of frequencies and seismic amplitudes. And an early warning earthquake system was just as essential in the past. News traveled slowly across the vast state. How could news of an earthquake be passed to rescuers quickly? Chang Heng's seismograph was the answer. The device consisted mainly of a, a massive bronze vessel and this was reputed to be about six feet across. The earthquake machine was a huge vessel of cast bronze consisting of nine dragons facing outward in a circle. Each dragon gingerly held a ball in its jaws. The instrument was designed so that any seismic tremor would cause the ball to fall from the jaws of the dragon and into the mouth of a frog facing the direction of the tremor. Despite its beautiful exterior, it is the internal mechanism of the machine that is so ingenious, even by today's standards. When an earthquake struck, the vibration which was transmitted through the earth, which actually travels very, very quickly through the earth's surface, would hit the jar. There was a vertical rod inside the jar, carefully balanced with a weight at its top end. This is known as an inverted pendulum. The seismograph worked by having an inverted pendulum inside it that basically toppled over and by toppling over in one direction or another it would impact with a ball and the ball would fall from the side of the seismograph giving an indication from which direction the earthquake had actually come. The inverted pendulum is an ingenious device. It stands motionless until the slightest vibration sends it toppling over, indicating the direction of the epicenter. We can all picture what a conventional pendulum is if we think of a grandfather clock swinging, it has a pendulum swinging inside it. An inverted pendulum is the exact opposite, where you have a pivot underneath and you're trying to balance that from underneath. But there's another discovery from ancient China that, like the seismograph, is vital to us today a technology that delivers the ultimate power source of the modern world, oil drilling. Today we assume that it was modern engineers who pioneered the art of deep drilling technology. Yet incredibly, the techniques used in acquiring supplies of oil and natural gas were actually reinvented from those of the Chinese 2,000 years ago. 
It's amazing to think that it's 2,000 years ago the Chinese were using the same techniques to drill for uh, salt and for natural gas that we're still using today. The sheer size of the ancient drilling machines was remarkable. Derricks, also known as heaven carts, rose over 50 meters above the ground. Images which we associate today with the landscape of Texas would not have been uncommon in ancient China. Amazingly, examples of these ancient industrial machines still exist in some regions of China. This allows scholars a first-hand glimpse of the devices used in these ingenious, superscale machines. The drilling rig was constructed from heavy-duty bamboo, with the drill suspended by cables. A team of workers stood on a wooden plank lever, much like a seesaw, and this lifted up the drill head made of iron. The pipe was allowed to drop until the drill bit on solid rock and began to pulverize it. The bamboo cable used in the machine was extremely strong. In fact, its tensile strength was comparable to modern-day steel. The drill stem was pulled from the hole using a large wheel, somewhat similar in appearance to that on a modern flexible cable downhole tool truck. This rig was extremely versatile. To deal with the different rock types, the Chinese even produced a series of drill bits, specifically modified to different geologies and rock types found in different parts of the country. Using these drilling techniques, workers were able to reach the depths of the earth, where salt, natural gas and oil were at their richest. When extracted from the wells, the gas was raised several meters above ground level and then distributed for hundreds of kilometers through an elaborate network of pipes. But it was during the era of the Song Dynasty at the turn of the first millennium that the pace of Chinese industrialization reached its peak. Inventors and engineers were creating colossal, incredibly advanced machines on a scale not to be seen in the West for another thousand years. And the techniques they invented for manufacturing are still in use today. As well as advances in technological engineering and manufacture, this period produced the earliest industrialization and mass production of a substance that was to change the world for good. The Song Dynasty lasted from 960 to 1279 AD and was based in the Henan region of eastern China. The dynasty oversaw a 300-year period of economic growth coupled with great artistic and intellectual achievement. It was during the Song period that the four great inventions of papermaking, printing, the compass, and gunpowder were further developed, technologies that spread across the world and changed it permanently. Of these four great inventions, perhaps the most significant legacy of the Song dynasty was the combination of three simple chemicals into one of the most explosive substances in history, gunpowder. This single purpose but multi-use mixture not only revolutionized warfare, but has led to rocket and missile development and even the first few steps on a journey of exploration that has put man on the moon. But the Song period was also marked by stunning advances in manufacturing. One particularly innovative area was in heavy metal manufacture. In the province of Shantung, one recent discovery has given us remarkable insight into the metal forging capabilities of ancient China. The remains of a giant cast iron pagoda that dates back to the Song dynasty. What makes these iron structures so impressive is that casting massive pieces of iron is a challenge even today. How the engineers achieved this difficult task is something that we find hard to comprehend. To produce and cast quality iron on a mass scale, iron workers today need to keep a massive volume of molten liquid at a very high temperature, so as to allow the pouring of the liquid metal. The same was true two millennia ago. 
one way to raise the temperature in a furnace is to blow in air, exactly as we might do when we fan the flames of a barbecue or use bellows on a fire. Modern ironworks use the same principle, but they use electrical air pumps to feed the fire. But how might the ancient Chinese have devised a method of driving massive volumes of air to heat their furnaces? Archaeologists have recently discovered evidence that automated air bellows machines were in fact in use. Drawing on the technological knowledge of their predecessors who had begun to use water as a motive power, it's now thought that Chinese engineers created a mechanical system for the operation of the blast furnace bellows. To generate the kind of heat required in a blast furnace, you need quite considerable volume of air. It doesn't need to be incredibly high pressure, but there needs to be a lot of it. And what the Chinese did is they modified the traditional water mill, and they developed a system of bellows which are operated by cranks worked by the water-powered wheel. Dr. Garain Toin is a specialist in mechanical design and engineering at the University of Bath. Using a water wheel as the, the starting power source and you want to drive a bellows, you can drive it using a crank and where you have a central axle and an offset pin and some form of connecting rod and link. So the water wheel will turn the crank in a rotary motion and then all that the crank does with its connecting rod is convert that into a linear motion that you can use to power the bellows. This type of machine is similar in principle to the design of the piston in a steam engine or automobile, but operating in reverse. In the Chinese machine, the wheel turns to operate a crank, whereas the later steam engine used a piston-driven crank to turn the wheel. The ancient Chinese understanding of engineering made possible automated continuous air blasts to create the high temperatures needed for successful iron casting. Hand in hand with the mastery of casting came further mechanical innovations that were also centuries ahead of their time. The Song Dynasty produced advances in mass automated manufacture and high-tech sophisticated machines, some of which laid the groundwork for much modern machinery. One such invention is the ancient world's version of the odometer. An odometer is a simple device that allows you to measure distance in exactly the same way as you have an odometer on the dash of your car. But could the Chinese have invented the gearbox more than a millennium before the modern engine? This fascinating ancient device is known as the rangefinder chariot. When pulled alongside a marching army, the cart signalled the passing of each 500 metres by banging a drum. This model is a small-scale version. The actual odometer was much larger. The real-sized chariot is very big. What you see now is a mini-sized model. We rebuilt this according to the ancient texts. The toothed gears in the machine are driven by the chariot's wheel. It uses what is described by modern engineers as a reduction gear train, a system that lowers the output speed so that one or more pins can revolve slowly, releasing catches at predetermined intervals to trigger the striking of the drums every 500 meters. Experts believe that the machine was used to lead the Emperor's royal guards on military assignments, to record the distances of enemy camps, 